This is Maria Rebolada Gomez, and in our lecture with her, she discusses the various components of multicellularity and how organisms can arise from different forms of multicellularity. She also talks about her research with yeast cells and how her study is helping further understand multicellularity. In a previous study done by Dr. Radcliffe, we saw that unicellular yeast cells grown in rich media broth would form multicellular snowflakes that kind of look like that. So building off of Dr. Radcliffe's research, Maria's research found some really interesting things about multicellularity. Using the model system of the yeast was really helpful in understanding how multicellularity and these simple organisms could arise. Multicellular cells and unicellular yeast cells have the same growth rate, but what really limits their growth is the amount of resources available to them. In Maria's study, she plates both multicellular and unicellular cells onto one plate and records their growth over time. Although at first it seems that the two types of cells are growing at the same rate and that even the multicellular cells might be growing faster, in the end it's discovered that the unicellular cells are the ones that are continuing to grow because they still have access to their resources. The multicellular cells, although are growing faster because there are more cells in the cluster, consume all the resources available to them, which then slows down their growth rate. So Maria's research is actually really cool. It kind of opens up the doors to understand how unicellular organisms could have developed into such complex multicellular beings. Like a singular yeast cell is a very simple organism. That's why scientists use it as a model organism for their studies. But to see it develop into such complex multicellular beings such as Dr. Radcliffe's snowflake yeast cells and Maria's multicellular yeast cells is really cool. And what her study shows that a unicellular organism can evolve into a multicellular organism based on its environment and resources present, it kind of helps simplify how organisms in the past could have evolved into what we have now. Like our ancestral organisms started off as single cells and small clusters of cells, but because of the resources and the environment around them that created the perfect condition for evolution, we became a thing. And that's really cool. This is so cool. I asked a question during the lecture about whether the switch from unicellular to multicellular cells of the yeast organism was controlled by anything specific and whether that switch happened faster once she began replicating that switch. And Maria said that it, it almost seems as if it's becoming a sort of plastic trait where they can sense, okay, time to be uni, time to be multi. And it'd be really cool to see further research done on that plastic trait of being uni to multi and whether that switch actually has a benefit to the yeast cells. Like if out in their natural environment, these yeast cells do switch back and forth, why and exactly how can they switch so fast? And whether the trade-offs seen in the scientific experiment would translate to their natural environment.